As the commissioner approaches the uh, bench here, we're back on the clock once again. It's a new day. It's a new pick. Got 107 for Don't Be Last, maybe the worst name in the uh, entire <laughs> league. Not well, the best name. That's you got for sure. the. Uh, you didn't come in last, so that's good. <laughs> I don't know what's worse, middle of the pack or last. Who knows? True. Depends how next year goes, I guess. True. That is Big Co's team. Jay Wayne, you're up for uh, pick one seven here. All right. Who you got? I'm going to go with uh, decent. Revelry Brewing Company. Oh, a little Lefty Lucy? Yeah. Left Coast IPA? You know, we sound like the West Coast, but it's the best coast. We're on the East Coast, which... Probably the best coast. It's a decent coast. <laughs> yeah. Any coast is a good coast. I, I mean, I like my Eastern Standard Time, but... The fact that it says standard tells you a lot, but the west side with the sunsets, Man, it does. It can does. We, can we just change? The, can we get Jared Goff in here and figure <laughs> out? Can, and can can we get the sun coming up over here? I mean, we're going down over here. We're still getting decent sunsets over here. Oh, you got to go Gulf side of Florida to get that. <laughs> because right. big on the sunset. Love a good sunset. It's my favorite. It's, you got a body of water and being able to look west on a clear view, you're pretty much good. <laughs> That's right. You South know? southwest back porch is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back 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 to this draft. Sorry about that. Had, All right, Jay, had to get wait, a crack in. So I'm I'm gonna go T.J. Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Whoop whoop. Big Co's got a pretty decent team. Mm. Could J- be a lot better. Ma- made the playoffs. Took a blow with Tyree Kill. Why not McCole Hardman here with with uh, uh, Tyree Kill on the bench here? I mean, I think we'll probably have to save that discussion for a little later. All right. I know. I'm I'm sure if Big Co had this pick. He'd probably take McColl. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, you, you'll you probably have a chance at McColl in the actual draft at 1-7 here. Are you going to take him? Hard not to. Yeah. Hard not to. What? But what I've noticed, I did. we did have, we just went through the weekend of the FFPC rookie drafts, which was a lot of fun. And other than the one, there was two drafts where I saw him go 1-5. I was one of them. And then there was a couple drafts where he was like 1-10, 1-12, 2-1. 2-1. I was one of the 1-12s. Mm-hmm. So... I uh, might be able to get another player here and then trade back, get my second rounder moved I, up. I've also seen some where he goes in, you know, the one four. Well, I, like I know, said, I took him one depends five. Depends on who's I in I took there, him one five. Yeah, so, so you, I ain't afraid. Right, Jay Wayne Hawkinson, why, why, why the hawk? Well, looking at at Big Co's team, he's he's got some tight ends, and this is tight end premium, and uh, he's got Mark Andrews, Trey Burton, David and Joku. So I, I like that squad and Blake Jarwin, but those guys are all. Pretty young and and unproven in a way. I think I think David Njoku's probably going to be just fine this year, but he'll probably have up and ups and downs. There's a lot of mouths to feed there, so why not just throw another top end talent, best player on the board, in my opinion, I guess here uh, onto his squad. Gotta like the Mark Andrews outlook for the season, especially with Lamar. But yeah, I I, I feel you. Uh, I just so he's out of Iowa. Obviously, the boys are pumping out tight ends mm-hmm. in Iowa. Uh, obviously, they had they had Kittle a couple years ago. Before that, they had C.J. Fedorowicz, who was coming on strong, but I think had to exit the league due to con- concussions. And then years back, they they had they were put out Dallas Clark. Oh sure, sure. never wore gloves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, I'm sure everyone knows about these tight ends and that they're really good. It, obviously, he was drafted eighth overall, uh, 87% spark score. The hands are pretty solid. Only dropped one pass out of 51 catchable balls in 2018. Uh, it's a 76% catch rate. He's just really dependable and safe, in my opinion. I, I understand we'll probably have a discussion of, of Noah Fant versus Hawkinson. And, and I sat on the clock here, and I, I've struggled with which one of those guys I like the best because they both have pros and not too many cons. But I just feel like Hawkinson is, is probably a little safer uh long term maybe i i don't know i just i'll go with the guy that's got the sure hands i guess is basically what it came down to for me um 35 of his 49 catches went for first downs or touchdowns i think he's got a really good release off the line of scrimmage i think he's a good route runner he's got quick feet to go with a nice jab step he makes good cuts and gets in in and out of his breaks very well he's also kind of like Nikhil harry in a sense that he uses his body really well to shield defenders and and shield him off create good little little bit of separation there in tight quarters but he does gain separation as well i mean he's just he's, he's pretty athletic 
Uh, he's got a nice little subtle push off at the top of a route to, to also get some more late separation. The yak is pretty solid. Uh, it's not always the best, but I mean, he's also got the ability to miss several guys miss and turn a, a short gain into a really long one. He averaged 7.3 yards after the catch, so that's pretty strong. He can he can hurdle you. And then obviously the big thing here is is his blocking, and I know that doesn't help help you in fantasy. But he gets a ridiculous amount of credit for his blocking. If you read about him, he's like the best blocker that ever lived. Uh, elite, dominant, A-plus, soul-snatching. These are just adjectives I've read that described his blocking, and I think it's really good. I mean, I can't really argue too much. It's definitely not perfect. Sometimes he gets ahead of himself, comes in a little too hot, and will whiff on a block or two and, and, and go right past the guy, but then he's also pancaking dudes into the ground, really good at getting inside and outside leverage. I mean, he's just he's going to be able, I think, to get on the field, and I think that's going to help uh, You know, the amount of snaps that he played in college. I think he's going to get a fair amount of snaps – the Lions obviously spent a huge pick on him. Daryl Bevel, he's a, they're not sure how what kind of scheme he's going to run. He's in, in the past, he's basically shape shifted his offense to meet the the. Is that Mike hot? <laughs> Something just ripped. <laughs> Is that Mike hot over there? <laughs> check check. We might need to take a short bathroom break for we're gonna, <laughs> new we're gonna, pair of shorts. Looking for Ray Finkel. <laughs> Ray ain't coming home. Jeez. So, anyways, I'm intrigued with Daryl Bevel. I know there hasn't been the greatest history of tight ends with Matt Stafford, and people want to point to that. But, I mean, he had P Brandon Pettigrew for six years. He did finish with one top ten finish, but that's it. But, I mean, it's, come on, it's Brandon Pettigrew. And then he had Ebron there for several years, uh, I think. Let's see here. But, I mean, he missed – he missed games and was injured in every year that he was there except for 17 when he finished as a tight end 15 overall, which he had ups and downs. I mean, looking at that game log, there were some really good games and there were some bad ones. And I just – I don't know. I, I can't – it's hard for me to make an excuse of why Ebron wasn't really good with with Matt Stafford, but he, he was with Andrew Luck. I mean, I mean, I guess I can because Andrew Luck didn't have a lot of options there. All of his guys got hurt. He was basically throwing a T.Y. Hilton on a bum ankle – and Ebron was there to just catch every touchdown available, and that offense was really good. Yeah, and, and, it, and really it's low. more of a it's a it's a number one. Andrew Luck is like the tight end position, and number two, um, it's a it's a system. Like they like they put out two tight ends out there. They like to Frank Wright comes from a tight end kind of centric area, and you know so it's an easy fit for Ebron to go over there and give Andrew Luck a good target and and a good scheme to get you know get Ebron the ball maybe that Jim Bob's uh, scheme wasn't so much scheme towards the tight end. They tried to get a, a big mismatch there, but maybe it just they didn't fit together and they, maybe they weren't working in the scheme. And, you know, who, who, who really knows? But that's kind of the reason why I think Ebron's doing well. Yeah, obviously, there was a lot of injury there. It's T.Y. Yeah. Hilton and Chester Rogers and Ryan Grant. And then Doyle gets hurt. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a system. It's a system fit right there. And yeah. uh, so... So I can't make like a, I can't make a system argument for Hawkinson here, but I do think that Daryl Bevel is good at getting the best out of his players, and he's a quarterback whisperer. I mean, he was Aaron Rodgers' quarterback coach when he was a rookie. He he led Brett Favre and the Vikings to the NFC Championship. He was part of drafting and grooming Russell Wilson with Seattle, and they went to two Super Bowls. Obviously, he had that questionable play call where he where he decided to pass it instead of run it at the end of the the second Super Bowl, but. I mean, he's he's done well with, the, and he's shaped his offense around the talent of the guys that he has. So I think I think there's a lot there's a lot of talent here. Obviously, with Hawkinson and Patricia saw what 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 a good blocking tight end can do, who can also receive and run good routes. And right, which is something I think a lot of people don't realize is what Gronk was pretty much one of the best blocking tight ends in the league. Is something that he doesn't get. They just think he's right. this big nasty guy, but he's a filthy blocker. Right, uh, which you know definitely helped Hawkinson's case to to get on the the, the uh, Detroit Lions here right and be and, and I think he's going to do a lot for his team maybe not from a stand, fantasy standpoint we gotta we gotta hope that Stafford develops a relationship with him and trusts him and that they call plays up for him but he's going to be out there helping the team he's definitely going to help carry on and I think I don't think he can hold him back and maybe yeah. it doesn't work out right away and maybe you don't get the quickest initial value spike but this right. is a longer term play and it's a safe play in my opinion and and he was the best Best safest pick here to take. Yeah. Well, for one, 
obviously this is a new coaching staff 100 percent. they tried to keep jim bob in and it you know didn't work out which i, I didn't mind coming in i kind of like trying to keep a little continuity there but agree it just wasn't working out and they he knows patricia kind of knows what he wants and what he wants to see and th there's nothing to say that matthew stafford isn't the quarterback here in a year or two you know it could happen it doesn't happen often where you know teams let go of a guy who they may or may not view as a franchise court but they're not his guys so there is a chance that maybe Stafford goes somewhere else um, and they find a, a different quarterback but now they're bringing in a whole new system so it's just like for a while it was Jim Bob Cooter it was hey wait hey, we want to run the ball we want to establish the run well Patricia's coming in here and he really wants to establish the run and do what Patricia wants to do and it's they excuse they let Jim Bob go and they brought in a guy who wherever he's gone he's had a really good track history of being in the top 10 of rushing year in year out now he has had good AP running backs he had AP, AP and Marshawn Lynch um, but he still shows that he is willing to run the ball and I've read several things about how Bevel and Patricia had multiple meetings and multiple sit downs about how they want to run the offense and they want to know what Bevel's ideas was and how he wanted to do it and this and that. Um, I do. I, I, I always dislike Daryl Bevel because I'm a Niners fan. I, I, I don't think he's not my favorite uh, play caller. I don't think he's like super creative, but um, he gets it done. I, I like the fit with him and Patricia and kind of what they want to do. And uh, I mean, so when Daryl Beva was in Minnesota, um, there's a guy named Vizante Shanko. Little throwback Shanko. for you. Hadn't heard that name drop in a while. But in 2008, uh, in the Bevel offense, uh, they had Gus Farad as a quarterback. So Farodi, take that for what it is. Uh, but Shanko was the number eight PPR uh, tight end there, which was it was a pretty low PPR scoring year in general. Like the top two guys were good, but like every year. Um, well, it goes up and down, but like. It was mostly down. 174 <laughs> and 169 PPR points were, you know, that was the that was four and five. So he came in with 143 PPR points and was a number eight tight end. Which mm -hmm. you know, after those top couple of tight ends, even being up in the top ten, yeah, what does it really mean? Right. But I mean, what what's consistent throughout this with Jimmy Graham and with with uh, Shanko here? He had they they he ends they end up scoring some decent touchdowns from the tight end position. Uh, Shanko had seven touchdowns on 42 catches, which helped him propel up into that uh, tight end eight range in PPR. And then in 2009, he gets Brett Favre. Uh, so the old gunslingers in town, he has 79 targets, 56 catches and 11 touchdowns mm -hmm. where everyone was losing their mind by maybe the most fun tight end name ever, Vasante Shanko. Um, and he was tight end nine that year. So 178 points. So you can see the difference right. in tight end points from year to year. Um in, in that situation, he'd have been tight end four the year before. The, the year before, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously he had Jimmy Graham in those last couple of years over in uh, Seattle. In Seattle, he didn't really have too many notable ones from 2012 to 2014. Luke Wilson, Zach Miller, kind of combo platter, and you know they all they did okay. 58 targets, 38 catches, three touchdowns, nothing nothing great. Um, but then he did get Jimmy Graham and. Um, in 11 games his first year, he had 74 targets, 605 yards, two touchdowns. In the next year, uh, 95 touchdowns in 60, touchdowns? 95 That's uh, a lot. targets, 65 Whew. catches, almost 1,000 yards and six touchdowns. So not a terrible year for Jimmy Graham in the second year in, over there. And then obviously he has a 2017 year where Jimmy Graham still sees a lot of targets, but the yards go way down. He's at says sees 95 targets, only has 520 yards, but he scores 10 touchdowns. So again, seems to be maybe scheming up a, D, a big tight end for catches some touchdowns. So not out of the question that Hawkinson comes in here and gets some decent red zone looks sure. um, for in this new system. I think he'll be a better regular NFL player for the team than he is fantasy-wise uh, for a little bit. So it might take a minute before he's fantasy relevant. It's one of the longest developing positions out there. Right. Um, and you do have uh, Najoku on this team and Mark Andrews and Trey Burton who all could help you out. You got a little bit of time that you could hopefully develop some Hawkinson on, on this team. Well, unfortunately, it's not best ball, so I do. Right. I got to play the uh, the guessing game on a week-to-week -week basis. But like you said, yeah, I, I, when I was putting this, this an auction startup, I uh, was obviously all in on Trey Burton going to the Bears last year. Still believe he could be great if they just throw him the damn ball. Um, and Joku was fun. I didn't have Joku on any Dynasty team going into that startup, so I wanted Joku for, for just because he was just awesome. And 
I agree. I think he's going to be just fine. He's still probably the youngest tight end in the league, even though he's been there for two years already. Um, I, I like him long term. You know, still solid. Hard Love to, it. Hard to figure out when to play plug that guy in, but like you said, Jay Wayne, it's a long term pick for a high value asset in Hawkinson. And I, you guys kind of went around pretty good there, so I'll keep my two cents to it to a minimum here. But Gronk and I'm Hawk Hawkinson and Gronk have been in the same sentence before, so this isn't new, but I'll not try to put them on the same same. Well, yeah, you can't do that. The same, comps same are ridiculous. Parallel. He's been but, comped to Gronk, Ertz, Kelsey, Witten, and O.J. Howard. Every well, tight end ever. Right. right, the best ever. Um, He's obviously a Hall of Famer already, so I'll be careful the, what I say with that. But when Gronk came along his first year, he was just a touchdown monster out of the gate, and he really wasn't big. His volume wasn't there. He didn't get a lot of pass uh, targets, didn't get a lot of catches, but he, he had double-digit touchdowns as a rookie. And I'm not saying Hawk's going to do that, but Hawk's going to be on the field to have the option. If the Lions can get to the goal line or anywhere near the red zone, then he's going to at least be out there and have a chance as a big man we, that can catch to catch some touchdowns as a rookie. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he will. But he'll have the opportunity. The he will be on the field blocking, like you said, because his quality and that I think that's you know, like you said, the blocking itself isn't going to give you any fantasy points. But the fact that he's out there, down in and down out, as they they didn't draft him at number eight to develop his him over the next three years, as didn't try to figure out how to get him on the field. He's out there, snap one, week one, if he's not hurt, blocking and probably going to throw him the ball. Is they don't have as many playmakers as it used to, it, over the years. They've had playmakers in and out, obviously. The Ebron thing didn't work out early in his career. He showed flashes here and there. The majority of his career in Detroit, he had uh, Megatron overshadowing him, and we all know how much Stafford threw it to Megatron in triple coverage over anybody else. Um, and those, and in those same years, Ebron was super young and more and drafted, all kind of hurt, banged up, yeah, he was banged in, up and, in and out of the lineup for sure. But also drafted to be that vertical stretch move type tight end, but as that that type of thing was even getting popular at versus Hawk, who's going to be able to, yeah, block, but also be on the field at every play and give you an opportunity to get the ball thrown his way. The one thing I like about the coaching staff, and again, I'm not saying Hawkinson, if Hawkinson was, turns out to be 60% of Gronk, he's going to have a wonderful career. But the coaching staff led by Patricia, head coach, Saul Gronk day in, day out in New England for years and years as the defensive coordinator trying to scheme up something in practice to figure out how to stop him if they ever saw anybody any close anywhere close to his ability and on Sundays that they were fake going against, you'd know that he had the best defensive scheme against a good, de- uh, a good tight end week in and week out because he saw Gronk every day in practice. Of course, you know, towards Gronk's later years, he probably didn't practice a whole lot because he didn't have to and he was banged up and they were trying to preserve his body. But the point being, Patricia's seen – a Hall of Fame tight end, day in, day out with the Patriots. So I do like the ability for Hawk and Patricia and that whole scheme and Daryl Bevel to come full circle and for the work. I hope I hope it works out for Hawk. I drafted him in some in FFPC this week, this past weekend, and I wouldn't put it past me to make this type of play for this team at one seven in this draft. So I like it. All right, yeah. And for those of you on YouTube, what we're doing here is taking a home league of ours, and we the three of us are divvying up all these teams and making picks for each other. The three of us obviously have a team in this league and we're making sure we don't pick for each other so i just picked there for big coast team and we're going to keep this thing moving right along let's get to one eight all right on to the next pick here got 108 picking for hearst so good because he has hayden hearst uh and also a gamecock fan uh big co you're up what do you got well Hurst so good is <laughs> shout out to ross not the worst team name we got going on. Uh, he was a he's a gamecock, and he probably started off. Does does he have Hayden Hurst on his IR spot somewhere? Or it's on the taxi, taxi squad. There? I thought he had Hurst on his team. Um, you know he's uh, I'm as this mock, obviously mock drafts going on. Players are falling off the board. Hawkinson goes. It is a tight end premium league. He's got Kyle Rudolph, Ricky Seals Jones, who. Neither one of those guys had great years. Kyle Rudolph had a decent year, better the year before, touchdown monster the year before. New quarterback comes in, throws it to Diggs and uh, Thielen all over the place, kind of forgets about Kyle Rudolph, if you will, a little bit. 
And Seals Jones got a little old chemistry with uh, Kyler Murray from Texas a <laughs> and days. I but like they that. Don't, they don't like the tight end in that air raid, though. I like Four it. wide receivers. Um, if you didn't catch that, Ricky Seals Jones and, and Kyler Murray went to school together. I think so, they were roommates at Texas a and think they were roommates. Ricky Seals Jones stock through the roof. <laughs> stock up, Ricky Seals Jones. Bef- before wide. <laughs> so... I'd like to cut out a bag here as I start to break down this team. I took Noah Fant. That's what we were waiting for. We All were, right. Usually you say the pick. Okay. And then go through the well, team. Well, you got Hurst so good. It's a good team name. Gamecock. Had to bring that all around. Mm-hmm. He does have Hayden Hurst on his team. Who, uh, you say Gamecock, you're building five minutes into a big coach segment. Yeah, you should have left that part out. Um, I went Noah Fant here right after Hawk. And I it wouldn't. It's a good pick. It's a good pick. Yeah, Woo! yeah. Woo! Woo! yeah. Woo! All right. Woo! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love that when there's like a a cornerback that nobody's ever heard of, and they zoom in on the fans in the draft. Yeah, it's like what you know, you don't know who that is. Um, so fan for PPR fantasy scoring wise could completely dominate Hawkinson in the next couple of years, and I don't think. And if that would surprise you, then you shouldn't be surprised. Let me just put that out there right now. A lot of people ADP rookie draft ADP throw it out the window, and that's what. Over the last couple of uh, days, and especially starting on Saturday when all the FFPC rookie drafts started out, our community page was blowing up. People, you know, posting draft boards, asking questions, this and that. Like, and one of the guys said, "Hey, just this rookie draft ADP, especially after pick four, you know, yeah. after the three running backs and Harry, just throw the ADP out it's the all, window. It's Wait, all up and down." <laughs> <laughs> so. If you like if you like Fant and you're sitting there at one eight in the draft or one seven or one six and Hawk's still on the board or whatever, and you're like, Well, I can't take Fant because Hawk's still here or whatever, take whoever you want. Fant goes to a system, goes to a quarterback. Now that you can say, Well, I don't know how long Flacco's been gonna be the quarterback, but Flacco throws it to tight ends. Fant's a first yeah, round he, rookie pick. Well Flacco hasn't necessarily had like too many big tight end seasons. He had one with Pitta, but he'll. It's because he really hasn't had one tight end. He'll mix it around to the tight ends, and he's not scared to throw it to the tight Pitt, end. Sure. Pitta did some work though. Pitta did do some work. Pitt was if Pitta's hip would have held together, Pitt. my man was doing work. Poor one out for Pitta's hip. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I I think that I think that Fant comes into the league here. Obviously, two years ago he would have been the no, he was the number one Devi tight end, and then Hawkinson came along and jumped him. And well, and most people are putting Hawkinson in front of Fant because at the end of the year, Iowa had it that way, and there's no way it could be any other. Sure, but way. if you if you could, yeah, you want to tea leave it and read a couple of articles. Fant and the coaching staff weren't exactly seeing eye to eye because of Hawkinson's, you know, right. surgeons. And then Fant was like, they didn't have a lot of good players, so they're sure. trying to get Hawkinson and Fant. Right, and then right. Fant and, and went down, and Hawkinson went up. Stop exactly. wise. What, what in, what's interesting is the snap counts for both those players in 2018. Uh, Fant had 491 snaps. Hawkinson was on the field for 787. The, the blocking. He's not coming off the field. One play. Well, Fant's not a terrible blocker, but he's not Fant Hawkinson. doesn't get enough credit. I yeah, feel I, like. I, he, I agree. Underrated, I would say. I, I can't disagree. He's I'm definitely not a liability. I mean, he's, he's not a top 10 draft pick because he's on the field every play for and going to give you that Gronk level blocking. And Hawkinson gives you that Gronk level. Like Casey said, Gronk doesn't get it. His, his offensive prowess gives you so much. Nobody gives Gronk the, 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 the respect he deserves for his blocking. And that's what gets you Hawkinson's draft capital there in the top of the top and, 10. And the hands. That's really the knock. And the difference between the biggest difference between the two guys are are, are are the hands. Yeah. Well, I mean, drops are drops. You know, sometimes when he catches touchdowns, you'll forget about a drop real quick. So he, he dropped 11, 11 balls on 80 catchable balls the last two seasons. So that's a 59.5% catch rate as opposed to 74% with Hawk. <laughs> And okay. and the thing is, I mean, he makes a lot of good plays, but you see that ball like moving when he's catching it. You know, he just needs to just needs to tighten he's, that thing up a little needs bit. Needs to catch it. Needs to needs to uh, stick get stickums get some right. stickums. Right. So I mean, the team the team here for for my man here, Hurst, so good. He's got a couple of decent running backs. Could have used a wide receiver here, but I I thought the asset of Fant was one of those things where this wide receiver core for this. Rookie draft 
is pretty much loaded in through the second round. And whether or not he trades up from the third round and gets two wide receivers, he could use some wide receivers. I felt like once Fant was off the board, then the, hey, I'll give you a first round pick next year for this pick kind of goes out the window yeah. in my mind. So like once, once Hawkinson and Fant are off the board in your rookie draft and assuming that they went off the board after the first, you know, five or six guys that you assume go up there, first four, the top four and that type of stuff. I felt like there's a tear break. So just from asset, because you we've said in previous uh, picks, you can start three tight ends in this league. Mm-hmm. It's an open flex, a lot of flexes. Yeah. And two, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end and a bunch of flexes. So, yeah. and it's, and it's tight end premium. So I felt like Fant, first of all, would come in and have a shot at being his top PPR scorer, depending on, Kyle Rudolph and what happens with him and the Vikings now and it give you another spot to A, plug in a starter B, yeah. at least have a, a tight end that everybody loves most people love his asset value in a dynasty rookie draft moving forward dynasty going forward I feel like Fant was just a safe pick that first, first of all you might be able to start sooner than later and it's normally not going to go down yeah so I mean this guy uh, Hurst so good has a, a decent team he's got Cam and Mitch at the top here um he's got chris carson uh, he has melvin gordon he has jordan howard which i know some people aren't that excited about but a decent depth piece he has aaron jones in there and then he's got Lashawn mccoy and tj yeldon so i mean carlos Hyde. you know not the most outstanding ever but a decent group of running backs there and uh then the receivers are edelman which gotta love edelman week in week out sure dontrell inman who just signed with the uh patriots patriots so you know, good good little uptick for him there, who's usually more of a week 13 guy. Yeah. Um, Jarvis Landry, Sterling Shepard got a huge boost, and then Thielen down there. So the receiving core is not terrible. It's, he's ready to go in the receiver area. So even if you would have drafted like a Paris Campbell for this team, which, I you know, we'll get to him in a second, but I, I don't think he's going to necessarily come in and give you a ton of startability right off the rip and feel super comfortable about it. So and you could have went Nicole Hardman, but same deal. Like who the hell knows what's going to happen there? But so I, you know, Fant could come in and give you some some potential startability right away on this team. That's what I was thinking. Right, and I'm 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 agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah I um, got to agree as well. I, I I I can't really argue too much if you want to take Fant over Hawkinson. I I happen to go Hawk, but I I completely understand the Fant. They're they're just different tight ends. I mean. Uh, Fant looks like a wide receiver out there. He's, mm-hmm. he's basically a wide receiver. He's he's Hawk's pretty athletic, but Fant's in the 98th percentile spark score. And, I mean, the, the, the change of direction is ridiculous. He's, everything is precise. He can get behind defenses for big plays. He's known for having a good attitude, wants to be an orthopedic surgeon when he's done playing football. So a lot of things to like about him. You got Flacco there for, I don't know if he's going to play the whole year, but he likes I would, I would imagine he's playing the whole year unless he gets hurt. If Roto Hat World or has anything or to say just, about it, or they're just terrible, and Vic Fangio is the, de- the the head coach of that team, and they got some defensive pieces, so I bet they'll be in a whole bunch of games. I yeah. like it. Um, but as far as Fant and Hawkinson go, like on that last team on on Big Co's team on Don't Be Last, like I could see taking Hawkinson over Fant on this team. I could see if you were down to two tight ends, maybe I might want to take Fant over Hawkinson. Because like you said, I want maybe a guy who can, I feel a little bit more comfortable potentially week in, week out, maybe score having a bigger fantasy impact from year one. I think I like Hawkinson. I like both of these guys just fine. I don't think you can really go wrong either way. But I think if you want immediate impact, I think Fant's uh, a guy that, that I would be looking for to put on my team. I just think they don't. They don't really necessarily. I mean, obviously, you got Cortland Sutton, who I like a lot, and I like Deshaun Hamilton a good bit, and Emmanuel Sanders. God bless his soul. I hope he comes back and he's anywhere near what he once was. But I mean, sure. at the end of the day, you don't you don't have any real proven weapons, and you have a, a quarterback who does isn't won't hesitate to throw it to a tight end, right? Especially one that's less athletic. And then on top of this, you stack on the coordinator that they brought in here, who is a first year coordinator, but Rich Scrang. Grello, I think is how you pronounce his name. He's a Shanahan guy. He's been with Shanahan since uh, he was in Atlanta. He came in and they were doing a bunch of grunt work for offensive line stuff, but he was a previous kind of uh, head coach and and, uh, offensive coordinator in college, took a pay cut to come learn from Shanahan and has been with Shanahan since he's been in uh, Atlanta. 
went over to Shan Shanahan was like, I'm taking this guy with me. I want him to be my quarterback's coach. I could see already see how good he is at this. And it's great that he's, you know, getting some offensive line experience here and figuring that out. It's just going to add to his game. And he right. was super bummed to lose him. But basically, like, you know, he deserves it. And they, they're getting a hell of a coach. So what you're saying is he's, he saw the, the X's and O's and the development of Kittle. Well, so yeah, so you're getting you're getting a guy in Shanahan and the Shanahans who put an emphasis on having a mismatch at a tight end position. Yep. Like you go all the way back to the Redskins days when Kyle Shanahan was there with his dad. First year there, they had Chris Cooley who had 126 targets the first year. Yeah. Um, now the next year, Cooley gets hurt and. Uh, What's his name? Uh, Fred Davis. Old Fred Davis comes in, who's you know, a little little longer in the tooth at that point, has 88 targets. And then, you know, next if, year it falls apart a little bit. And if then you they, guys are wondering, that noise was paper from Casey's notepad. <laughs> and he just hits you with a Fred Davis reference <laughs> after the notepad. Chris Cooley reference. <laughs> And he's left handed. We got Shanko, we got Cooley, and he's left handed. So this is a top top spiral notepad, which is the, the I like yellow a, legal a breakthrough yeah. a yellow legal pad. When you got to go top. You got to go top you, spiral if you're left handed. If you're wondering, if you don't you get about the preparation for this show? Jesus, I like the left. I like the uh, legal. Uh, My, there it is. That's yellow legal <laughs> pad right there. Top spiral. Maybe not the best for the environment, but yeesh. But he went <laughs> save a tree. He went Fred Davis reference. So Fred on you. Davis had 88 targets the year at, uh, in 2011, and then uh, things Cooley had couldn't get right, and they were looking for a new tight end. And then the, uh, Shanahan's last year there, they, they he picked up Jordan Reed. And anybody Reed, heard, ever heard of Jordan Reed? Yeah, had a nice season, but it was RG 3s kind of coming out party, so it wasn't like an outstanding tight end season, but still had a pretty strong rookie season. And then he goes to Atlanta, gets I think eight. I think um, Jacob Tammy the first year. He old Jacob Tammy, old Peyton Manning's old. Mm -hmm. guy gets uh i believe 88 targets down there the first year so then they bring in austin hooper the next year um and they kind of split roles a little bit so he, he he's many, going after many austin he's hooper going after a uh, he's going after a tight end once he gets around and once the little mismatch and then queue up san francisco uh they take kittle you know right off over uh over there once Shanahan gets to town and yeah they didn't have anybody there kind of like an Ebron situation by the end of last year but and then he shows up but, in Denver and they take but, a tight end in the first round but Kittle did his thing so then yeah so Scran Gallo goes over there and they obviously they needed a tight end but they go ahead and they draft Noah Fant and I think by trading back too I think that's going to be a guy who they're going to kind of plan their mismatches around and he's seen kind of how Shanahan likes to do it and what Shanahan wants to do and I think this is a you know we'll see if this guy can actually hack it as a coordinator it's the jury still out but I like connecting some dots here of you know Shanahan's been a guy who likes to win with a mismatch at tight end and that's they just drafted a huge mismatch in Noah Fant and the, it's, the position's really wide open Jake Butts had like five ACL tears now they will probably run some 12 personnel and Jake Butts a great inline tight end so he doesn't necessarily need to come out with great athleticism and but Jake Butt was a great blocker so they got a nice two tight end set if Jake Butt can be healthy by the time they uh everything rolls around but I really like the outlook of Noah Fant right off the rip I do think Again, like if you're looking for the value increase right away, I think Fant's value increase is going to go up a little faster than Hawkinson's. Now, there'll be plenty of people who are like, well, we're just I'm still in on Hawkinson. I'm just waiting. But Fant could get out there right away after connecting all these dots for you and, and potentially get a huge uptick in value right off the rip if he if he could be healthy. I like that a lot. I mean, if you think if you pick if you if you picture where you want Hawk to go, obviously with the elite blocking and just the physicalness of his game, then you say, all right, well, maybe crazy. I thought I, I, you know, shook my head last week at Jay Wayne when he said DK Metcalf and Calvin Johnson in the same breath. But the craziness is, all right, well, maybe, maybe Hawkinson could maybe ascend. We did Gronk wasn't Gronk before Gronk became Gronk, right? So everybody is uh, obviously all the good players are outliers, like you like to say, Casey. And I think that's a brilliant point on you. So Hawk probably never becomes. And it, a Hall of Famer, you know, one percent of the one percent. But I can see that. But the way you lay it out there for Fant, it's just like, all right, well, why can't Fant do what Kill did? You right. know, he's obviously just as athletic, and it's right there for him to be taken. I like what you said. Like the wide receiver staff for the Broncos 
on paper they don't scare you, but they do do they do and do. I like them. I, they I do love do. I like do, do. They do do some do, very do. specific things. Yeah. And Cortland Sutton is a monster on the outside physically that you have to defend because you can't just let him get the ball thrown up there without some pretty good defense to figure out how to stop that. And I've told you guys last year in the preseason after seeing Deshaun Hamilton run around in the preseason, I was like, that dude's an NFL slot receiver mm. for sure. He just rode the co- he just was in the shadow of. Emmanuel Sanders all year, and he did exactly what I thought he would do when Sanders got hurt. He showed you that he's an NFL slot receiver, and I hope, like you said, I hope Sanders comes back. But those guys at least are produ- they 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 don't scare you, but they better you got to defend them. Yeah, you know, d him up, and now but you all... plug in Fan to that, and it just it's a dynamic yeah. where I think it'll be greater that you know the sum is better than the individual parts kind of thing. Right, you put them all together, and it and it it could be nasty for Fan, and sooner than later than Hawk, I agree with that too. All right. You got anything else, Jay Wayne? No, I'm I'm good to go. I guess real quick, without opening up another can of worms, you go in hockey center fan. Well, I just kind of laid it out there. Like I, I think for the most part, if if I can like on Big Coast team, if you can wait, I don't mind picking Hawkinson and kind of being able to wait on my guy. Not that I don't think Hawkinson will have some decent games, but I think All right, Twitter poll. Hawkinson or Fant, A or B. I mean, I I guess I'll take Fant. <laughs> All but, right, what are you doing, Miko? It's real close. I I think it comes down to how your team's built and how you can ah, usher, usher them the, in. Take the take take your favorite guy. Yeah, today I'm taking Hawk and a lot and oh. a, and I'll take Hawkinson long term and and short term because today before they play a game I'll get more trade value out of Hawkinson than Fant. But once they get on the field week one, that could easily swap, which is all Casey's saying. All right. Well, we're going long term here tonight, but in the short term we're gonna take a quick break. And we'll be back with pick one nine nine. Welcome back. You guys ready to uh, get your draft on? Yeah, hit us up at the FF Dynasty on the Twitters, Instagrams, YouTubes. Visit the uh, website, yep. ffdynasty.com. All sorts of good stuff over there. You can see all the player pages and follow whatnot. along with these rookie picks. Yeah. So, let's get to it. <laughs> That's not the draft sound. Right next to the draft sound. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who's gonna gonna be? I'm all, my team's on the clock. Your team is on the clock. I'm picking. Best best team name of the league here. Yeah, that's up for debate. But I guess I'll introduce myself. Picking a one nine <laughs> in the 2019 <laughs> mock it up before you fuck it up. I myself for Jay Wayne's team Samaje Twa. Samaje Twa. I'm gonna select Paris Campbell. The slide will end here. <laughs> the slide ends. Um, Jay Wayne's got a fairly balanced team. Got Kamara, and not that there's a running back to take, so really, right? you know, obviously maybe some people could argue you could take Daryl Henderson, Singletary, or Damian Harris here. I don't see it that way necessarily right now unless I had Alv- unless you had Gurley. Yeah, um, even then it's – I guess you could – I might trade back. Uh, but he's got Cohen. He's got Tevin Coleman. He's got Devontae Freeman. He's got Alvin Kamara. Um, and then on the receiver side of things, he's got Keenan Allen, Alshon, um, Marvin Jones, Tyler Lockett, Corey Davis, uh, and then Corey Davis, who you hopefully you get something out of. But out of Keenan, Alshon, and you know between Tyler Lockett and Marvin Jones and all those other guys, you you can put together Jones. a decent starting lineup. And you have you got a couple. Say my name. <laughs> say my name. You got a couple of aging veterans over there, which can help you kind of get past maybe the year you or so that you might have to wait with Paris Campbell to be a reliable starter for you. Um, and maybe Nelson Aguilar, you can plug him in here or there if you needed him on some spot duty and or Zay Jones um, and see what happens. But I ended up going with Paris Campbell on this team for one, because I did think he was the best player left on the board. And two, you have some receivers that, you know, you can play the waiting game on Paris Campbell. You're not drafting him to be the guy. I think that Paris is probably going to need you know, a season, I think he's a little bit of a raw prospect. I mean, a lot of these receivers are. Uh, he's not necessarily a route runner by any means no. at this point in his career. He That's basically the most, the biggest knock on yeah. him is his lack of a route He tree. didn't do a whole, which is a common theme among a lot of these, especially the higher end guys. There's not too many that you're like, oh, he's really polished. Like right. a lot of limited route trees, but, you know, it was... 
kind of just a lot of drags and goes and screens oh, from send my uh, man on that shallow cross. So you can't stop it for uh, Paris Campbell here, but he's he's obviously a burner. Uh, I like the fit of the offense. You have Ty, who's he's getting a little longer in the tooth. Funches is only there for a year. Deion Kane, I like a whole lot, and I, I want him on as many teams as I can get him on. But you know, it was just basically preseason hype last year. Uh, so Paris has an opportunity to come in here in a good system with a good quarterback and learn and and be a make your play in one day kind of guy. And I think he can develop into more than that. Uh, but just m- might need a season or two of of refinement before he's ready to go. I think he was a a fantastic player in his zone, especially if on those shallow crosses coming across. He f- he found all the soft spots and yeah. little creases in those spots and just killed all that zone coverage. So he he does that pretty well and then again you know if you just need a field stretcher he could do that for you um and hell you can kind of if you needed to you could hand it off to him um so a little versatility with paris i think it gives the uh it'll eventually give the colts a whole nother dimension i think he'll, he'll see the field this year i'm not saying that you're not gonna you know if you really needed him in a pinch you couldn't roll out paris sure. campbell but you know i like the the longer term he's maybe a little raw which he's a little older uh for a, a little bit more of a project receiver but he's not i'm not calling him a project that's the wrong uh, <laughs> that's, i like him a lot um it'd be a tough call between him and debo for me um yeah i think debo's probably a little bit less raw so i, I think no I debo's see. fairly refined in yeah, my opinion right. like but he's also a little old if, if you need a receiver coming out of the draft to plug in in your starting lineup week one it should be debo if you got Agreed. a like if you got a team like jay wayne who stole keenan allen last year for Deion lewis in a second rounder and really mm. upset me uh, you know, if you got a team that's balanced like he does and plenty of receivers and you want to wait on maybe the second coming of T.Y. Hilton, I, I can't blame you. But if you need a player that you can plug in and, you know, you got Debo's a lot off the more, board, but De- yeah, Debo's yes, off the board, but slash more NFL starter ready. Yeah. But Paris Campbell, who doesn't want a player that's playing with love? Right. Just to, Debo went at one six in the last draft in case you missed the recap in the beginning or forgot about it. Right. It, or forgot about it. And I, when I say player, I mean playmaker. Yeah. Not the you last know, draft, but who, the beginning of this draft. Well, yeah. Who doesn't? You're Sorry. Out. Yeah. Yeah. The, right. fir, the first half of this draft. Who doesn't want a playmaker? Paris Campbell, when you're looking at rookie board, his name just jumps out because it says IND beside him. Mm-hmm. If it's or Colts or Indianapolis, you mm-hmm. know, you're like, you could, it basically just says he's got luck at quarterback. Yeah. Glaring and, beside and his name. And there's some big upside. Oh, yeah. Just out of the profile of the player. There's so. tons of upside. I mean, he was a high school running back. So I love, I love seeing that. You can and, see it every time he catches the ball. Well, the name of the game is versatility right now in the league. So, and yeah, he didn't run many routes, but he had 90 freaking catches last year. Right. So they couldn't stop whatever routes he was running and then i mean his his yards after the catch is pretty spectacular he had 87 yeah. percent of his total yards came out he had the like a thousand yards and 800 and some out of them were on the right yak that's yeah. 9.4 yards after catch per catch he had almost more yards after catch than he did have total yards like that's <laughs> when you look at right. those numbers they're so close to each other right you're like which one's bigger but back to the route tree, there was a play versus Michigan in 2018 where they're in the red zone. It was third and seven, and he's running a corner route. And you see him lean his defender inside to like get a little bit of vertical push. And then right at the top of his break, he gives us this little subtle little hand push to free himself and get to the corner. And he's like wide freaking open. And you see that separation, and you see him get that stem up vertical to get the leverage mm-hmm. inside to bust outside. And it's like, hey, maybe he can yeah. learn to oh, run some routes. 100%. I, mean, I don't... I'd- I agree, like I I love some Paris. Like I said, that's why when you we, I said well, I don't know if I who I would take him or Debo. Like I I I got a hard time deciding between the two because I really like the upside of, of yeah. Paris Campbell. The hands are pretty good as far as wide receivers in this draft go. Most everything you see is handsy and away from the body. He did have 13 drops on 90 targets. A lot uh, of which, drops in the class, though. Which ranked him down to only it. 55th in drop rate. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what I was alluding right. to. Basically, most of these guys have a ton of drops. Um, but he's 55th in drop rate, so not the worst statistical here from wide receivers in this class. Uh, I mean, he's a great interview. He seems like a really smart, grounded, hardworking kid. And, you know, he's not going to take anything for granted. And he's he's already put there putting in work. And I think they're excited about him. And, I mean, how can you not be excited about having a playmaker of this caliber yeah. in an Andrew Luck offense? Uh, I'm yeah. down. I love this pick. Yep. A lot of mouths to feed right off the rip here in Indy. We'll see how it settles out. But eventually... It'll be uh, a Paris Campbell to to, uh, Andrew Luck show. Let's keep this thing moving. Moving right along. 
for pick 110 in the 2019 FF Dynasties. Mock it up before you fuck it up. The Buffalo Bills. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> Jay Wayne <laughs> is on the clock for Robbie Adams. Original team name. Went, went with the uh, <laughs> first name. First, last name. first last name combo. <laughs> Didn't even give me like a Robbie's Adams or anything. Like, yeah. At least give me Usually a goes BS. Bobby's World. True. It's right. Usually True. it's go to, right. which was a strong show in the nineties. Um. All right. Well, what's what's Robbie's team got going on <laughs> <It> here? <was. laughs> to hold that freaking tricycle, yeah. kill it. <laughs> oh sure. <laughs> Robbie. Uh, Robbie made the playoffs. Had a good year. Spent most of his startup draft money on a few players. Grabbed uh, Saquon Barkley for the most amount of money Whew. ever. He's got Aaron Rodgers, Jared Goff, so doesn't need both those guys, but has them. <laughs> uh, not much else at the at the running backs position. Uh, I mean, Royce Freeman is probably the second best wa- running back. Adrian Peterson did resign back with Washington, so maybe he gets yeah, a little bit helped, of work he out of him. He helped him but, out through the season here. Uh, but he's got Devontae Adams, Brandon Cooks, DJ Moore to go with uh, Travis Kelsey, so that'll help you win ball games for sure. Uh, he needs a running back, but there's no running back to take here. He doesn't have Gurley. I, I didn't take Daryl Henderson. Uh, he didn't really even come into play for me here, and maybe he should have. I don't. He's know. got Kelsey, so that really yeah bolsters the rest of the squad. It's like having a tight end and a and a flex player in your lineup, yep. tight end premium yeah. there. Cheating. So you got Saquon and 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 Kelsey and Devontae Adams and and Brandon Cooks basically right to go with a Raj and propelling this team with all its deficiencies. If he could just get a couple other good players, he'd be a nightmare. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> He really hit a couple home runs there with the old... Uh, he always does. He always has this kind of team. He always has a team with a bunch of bums and then like two or three really good guys that he has no business winning with. Yeah. He well, just, he spent all his money up front. Yeah. You know, he just was like, let me... I think he's out in Hawaii and he's like, let me get this draft over with. Bro, the waves are so good today, bro. Yeah. <laughs> well, he put it in the right place with yeah. Devontae Adams, Saquon, and, and Kelsey. So, are we going to let this build any further? Who the fuck did you take? <laughs> Jesus. By unpopular demand, I'm taking Hakeem Butler. Boo! Hiss! Hiss! Boo! Everyone's booing. Everyone is booing. Nobody likes it. He's he's the worst. They're saying it's a reach. He sucks. What are you taking that guy for? Well, why'd you take him, Jay Wayne? You could have had McCall Hardman. You could have had A.J. Brown. You could have had Isabella. You could have had Whiteside. Whiteside. You could have had Hollywood Brown. You could have had any of the running backs left. You could have had Kyle and Murray. Literally anybody. <laughs> but Hakeem Butler, Jay Wayne. What's the reason? Oh, well, there's so many reasons. Come on. Well, list them out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's one of my favorite wide receivers in this class. Uh, I wait th- a minute. Th- but before th- before I go, like I'm I'm he was my number one guy. I'm still huge on Hakeem Butler, so I'm really not that upset about the pick. I'm just voicing the public uh, yeah. court appeal here yeah 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 casey's being joe public over there and so to piggyback on joe public butler didn't go into the fourth round of the nfl draft yeah draft so capital how that's it. could you and end he of, wasn't even the first receiver yeah. taken on his own team end of discussion so yeah. how could you even no like, way how, how could you even like this no guy? way this guy and he's a hands good. catcher no he's a body he's a body catcher, catcher. Hmm. he's got some drops i'll admit that so does everybody else but nobody likes to pinpoint those because they're not as glaring on tape I mean, it, it, it's 165 is where he ranks in drop rate. That's not it's a good not number. Good. Not a great number. There was 11 drops last year on 104 targets. So 16 total drops over his career. And that's pretty much the biggest knock you can have on him. Uh, but I don't think he's a body catcher necessarily. I think he has some concentration drops. And it's it's just crazy. He's got a little he bit can, of T.O. in him. He makes the ridiculous right. catch and he'll drop an easy one here. And there. Right. And that's, that's, that's something I think he can clean up. People don't like him because of the the bad breakout age. He didn't he didn't uh, come on until late. He only had one good season of production, but I mean it was a ridiculous season where he put up. Yeah, I mean, we address all that in, in right. the breakdown of Hakeem Butler. You can find that in a previous podcast or on YouTube, right? Or on our website, you can find everything we've ever said about the guy, right? So, I mean, what are we doing? But here? an We're unfair playing? unfair. Uh, breakout age argument against him. Right, because he's got some background. decent rationale. Right, he, so he's go a check late that bloomer. Out. Yeah, he's a late bloomer, and he went through a lot early on in his life, and he overcame all that to basically get get drafted into the NFL after putting up a, a really nice season with with Iowa State, thirteen hundred yards, nine touchdowns, crushed down the field. First what about deep. Lazard? Yeah, well, whatever. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> I don't care. 
go listen to our breakdown. But basically, I mean, we're playing a game based on a game here. Right. And here's a, here's a six five condor, a pterodactyl, if you will, uh, with just the largest wingspan, height, arm length, hand size, any, anything you want. Uh, really fast, can get behind defenses and score long touchdowns. On top of that, being super versatile. He can crush out of the slot. He 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 was 60th in slot receptions, but 25th in slot yards. So he's crushing it everywhere he lines up. Yeah, he drops some balls, but he also makes some catches that you shouldn't be able to come down with. You can't teach that kind of thing. And I just think he has a ton of upside. I really like what Arizona's trying to do. I really like Kyler Murray. I like the coaching staff. I like I like what Kingsbury's going to try and do here. I think. Uh, he 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 really. I think Butler fits in great with this four wide scheme because you can't you can put him all over the place. Yeah, and he knows how to win at all the different levels. He's a great hand fighter off the line of scrimmage. He's got good release moves. He cut, crushes in contested catches. And you get if you got a big guy that's fast and gets behind defenses and scores long touchdowns, sign me up for that. Right. And you got a quarterback that can who can throw. also score short short touchdowns. Right. And. and Catch a short ball and take it long because he's nasty. Right. My man's running he's whip He's nasty racks. in the in the open field. Yep, the yak is is pretty solid. It's hard to bring down. Again, I you can knock the pick all you want. Yes, you probably could take wait a little longer in most drafts to take Akeem Butler. Yeah, but if this is your guy and you want your guy, go get your guy. I mean, right. And I don't. I'm. I'm you could probably trade back a little bit and and get into right. the second round. And yeah, probably. And bu- Get Butler. We're still. not we're not trading back in this exercise here. We're picking for these teams, and I'm not supposed to be thinking about the fact that I'm picking three picks from now again for a different team. I'm supposed to be this team on this clock. Right. Who do I take? I don't have another pick until the second round, ninth pick overall. Right. In the second round, so like I got to take who I want, and yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I really struggle with it. It took me a he while. Was the I, best. I, uh, I, I think he was the best yards per catch in the or or number two in the. Nation Entire nation. Year. Yards per completion, yeah. Sitting 19 and a half yards yeah. per catch. He was eighth overall in yards per route run, which is why everyone likes Isabella so much because he was first overall in yards yeah. per route run. And he, here's my man at eighth overall. So, and he's not, you know, a tiny little guy, and he was actually going up against decent, decent competition. So, I mean... I, I almost took A.J. Brown. I was about to take A.J. Brown, and I just kept watching. I kept going back and forth and, and weighing pros and cons, and it's just like this guy can make some ridiculous plays. Not that A.J. Brown can't, but I just I get a little bit of an out with the situation that A.J. Brown's in because nobody likes that. Yeah. And even though I'm not going to shit on Mariota like most people will, I mean, I'm not, I can't just be – just because a guy gets fucking hurt doesn't mean he's – a trash sandwich or whatever these yeah whatever I mean, the, you've had oh he's trash you've had he's had Get opportunities he's had opportunities he's been up and down he just needs a little to be a little more he couldn't consistent. feel his hand last yeah. year get out of here but he's been in the league for three years he gets hurt a lot that. you want to say you don't like him because he gets hurt a lot okay but don't say he's a bad quarterback think inconsistent but either neither here nor there yeah. i'm with you I, i'm down with taking butler i want to try to get butler on every single team that i have because i do think that he's an outstanding prospect i think he can do a lot i think he'll really blossom into a really solid NFL receiver. Like just because he got drafted in the fourth round and Isabella got drafted in front of him doesn't mean that pretty much any opportunity that I've had in the top of the second, I'll take Butler over Isabella all day long. Like that's just my personal preference. Like I maybe I could trade a couple of well, picks, but I want I'm I want sure as much Butler as I can get because I believe in in the guy. Sometimes you you know we're not drafters, we're not GMs, but I mean, even in DLF IDP, ADP, Hakeem Butler's going ahead of Isabella. Well, throw all the ADP out the window until you get on the clock. But when you sometimes teams take draft for safety, sometimes teams draft for need and a little bit of a combination of those things. Where were the Jamon Moore lovers when MVS was blowing up last year? Nobody was like, oh, well, Jamon yeah, Moore got drafted. Darius Fountain. You know, no, right. Nobody was talking about Jamon Moore getting drafted ahead of MVS. When MVS was doing work, or and then ESB, he, who saw the it, field more than him, and then and then obviously it's been it's been brought out in an article now that Valdez Scantling made Aaron Rodgers mad, and he disappeared at the second half of the season. He was nowhere to be seen because yeah. A. Rodgers didn't want to throw in the ball, and well, he it, must really hate Jamal Moore because he. <laughs> but you know, so I think <laughs> he hates everybody. I I really with this. You, I mean, you could do this a million times. Like Lacron Treadwell got drafted in the first round. Stephon Diggs is and Adam Thielen was an undrafted right. player. Stephon Diggs got drafted in the fifth round. Like right. get, at the end of the day, Fuck can you play? It really doesn't can you matter. Play? 
So do you sure there's percentages you can play 100 percent right? Well, the you got the air raid system coming in and the new quarterback and everything that's changing over there in Arizona. So uh, I can see I can see the fit. I see I like Isabella and the idea of what that. Me there's too. a lot of Me there's too. a lot and of I, targets about there's a lot of uh, attempts about to come out of that offense. I think Isabella is a great fit for the offense, but I think Hakeem Butler has probably got the highest ceiling. Ridiculous, exactly. He's right. got the highest ceiling of maybe any wide receiver in this class, and. I'll say that just Maybe knowing you knowing say less, DK Metcalf. knowing less about it than than y'all do, knowing less about all these prospects. But as I'm trying to I mean, play, you could make up, an argument for me, Cole, too, having the high a high ceiling. I mean, the highest. Sure, but he's because he's, he's got Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, but, but like, but when you see Paris has got Andy Andrew Luck. So, but you get yeah, DK Metcalf has a high ceiling too. But if you put together what happens in the NFL and how it works, this dude is he's not 240 pounds. And you know pushes people off the line of scrimmage on the ground like DK, but he can. But, you, but he can. All you gotta do, but he can. He's still two thirty. And, and then all you gotta do is watch that whip route that is you know gone viral. You know you and you see his agility, and you put that together with the fact that he's six five two twenty seven, and you're like, all right, this guy yep. he he's he's flexible too, right. not just big and fast. And he gets after it in the blocking game. That means sure. he cares. He cares about each snap and each play. He's putting in work, crushing blocking downfield. Yeah, and I mean he's he brings size over there. Like he's gonna be a red zone threat immediately. Right. I think. When Larry's like, gone, there's no one over six feet there. I, mean, I don't know how Kirk? big. I forget how big Kirk is, but I don't think he's very big. close to six. But not, not he's not six five. Sure, and you know what? For a guy who's overcome a lot, and the fact that he gets a year with Larry. And so does right. Isabella, and then Christian Kirk gets a second year with Larry. Like, good for all those guys, just as just as men. And yep. we'll see X if that can. Sometimes when you see a guy, you know, get some things together, it shows up on the field too. Because like, how many times have you heard that interview with Mike Vick? He's like, oh, I never, you know, there was a thousand dollars in one of those DVDs that Coach Jim Moore gave him, right. and he never found never, it never because found he it didn't he open it up. It. Yeah. He never opened it up. So maybe with Larry over there showing these boys how to be pros, they all have to learn a new system. So, you know, Larry's got to go back to the grind here a little bit too, which probably and, is rejuvenating. And I just I, I think if he could get on the field with what how Kyler can move around and what he can do, like Butler's going to be an easy – out for Kyler Murray down the field here. Love it, love it. I like the ceiling. And Ke- I like- and people like Keyshawn Johnson to get on the field because he's better route runner right off the rip. We'll, we'll see about that. Yeah, yeah. And they, you know what? Like this is not the type of pick where you're like, all right, well, I'm drafting Keem Butler, and I'm gonna take him when you draft him and he pops up on your bench. You get insert him into the dra- starting lineup. That's not what. That's right. not what I'm drafting here. I told you if I'm drafting for starting week one, I'm drafting Debo. But if I'm drafting for Where's my ceiling? And yeah. where, what, if this is, if I'm swinging and I miss, I fall out of my boots, okay. But if I make contact, chicks dig the long ball. Yeah. I can get on board with Hakeem Butler. There's not too many receivers down here that you're plugging and playing right now. Maybe you could say that you'd be okay with Isabella right off the rip of getting you some PPR Maybe. floor. Maybe. Uh, but Hollywood Brown, like, scares the lights out of me i mean miles ball, miles maybe. boykin i mean i guess you could make a little bit jj arcega white side might not even really see much of a field for a little while mccall right. hardman maybe maybe yeah. um but you know there's, there's just a lot of ifs and maybes and a lot of guys who it might be a minute before you're comfortable with putting them in your lineup so take the guy who you like jay wayne let's go all right well let's take another quick short break and we'll be back with pick 111 for your pleasure Welcome back into the back half of the first round, of 2019. Mock it up before you fuck it up. You can catch us on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual handlers. I'm at IMC Myers. Jason is at J Wayne's World. Big Co is at Dynasty Big Co. And be sure to check out this nice little website we've been working on. So uh, check that out. All sorts of uh, good player pages and all the all the stuff we've ever done is is over there. So be sure to check that out. Without yeah. Further ado, theffdynasty.com. Theffdynasty.com. You can also access the Patreon page from over there and get you a $5 holler, more content. After six months, you get a free shirt. You know the deal. Holler at your boys. Without further ado, let's get to pick 110. 
That's usually where. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually a little where, slow in the draw. Yep. All right. Well, sorry. Pick one eleven with pick one eleven in the 2019 FF Dynasties. Mock it up before you fuck it up. The Hershey Squirts with Ertz at the end of it because he's built around uh, Zachary. <laughs> uh, he's on the clock. Big Co, you're up. What you What you gonna do? Okay. Okay. Well. I'll go ahead and uh, get it get right to it since last time I drug it out a little too long. I went Miko Hardman here at 111. Carry um, Miko Hardman. He does have her Ertz, like you said. Um, he's got a sneaky Vance McDonald coming into the year without Antonio Brown. I like the uh, potential for Vance sneaky, McDonald. Um, taxi Squad, DJ Chark. Could have told him not to go there. Yeah. Uh, but he's got Dallas Goddard to back up Ertz. A solid combination. Injured reserves got a name in there called Cooper Cup. That looks good. Cooper. Move up the list here. He's got Michael Thomas. Curtis Samuel, sneaky good coming into the year. He's getting some love now. Stephon, Give me all the Curtis Samuel. Stephon baby. Diggs. Um Tyrell Williams. Did get he got he got beat out of Kareem Hunt down the end of the year, so that sucked. He, he lost Kareem Hunt going down the stretch there. So it's and and he's gonna have him gone for the first half of the year at least now. So we're a little iffy on the running backs. Struggling there. in the back department. Tr- struggling in the running backs department. Um and I really I this was my last pick in the first round for, for this draft here. So I had to get Hardman in just to get him in this conversation. So this dude probably needs to be taking a running back here. And in my eyes, Hardman should be gone before this, just as if that's the way you want to play it. I'm going to be playing it, and Hardman's not going to make it past 111 if I'm in the draft. But this guy could have gone running back for sure. Um, but I had to get Hardman in here so we could talk about him. <laughs> uh, you know, you can you can say all you want about how they he he's not um, he's not Tyreek Hill and this and that like they're. Fairly athletically comparable. Obviously, mm-hmm. I, I, Tyreek Hill's a little faster, maybe a little stronger, in the burst. maybe a little tougher, maybe a little better three, wide receiver. In the three cone but drill. At the end of the day, Andy Reid takes this guy in the second round, and that's enough for me. I did respect what Hardman had going on in his game. SEC guy, game cut guy, saw, fair, and Georgia's just obviously everybody's favorite team to put on TV these days. So, saw a ton of Hardman play. More, more. Hardman than most other college teams, if you know, if not Gamecocks watching some Georgia game, watching their running backs come to life, and then you see Hardman get the ball and he's electric. And you plug him into the the role, it's pretty easy to see the usage c- questionable. So as far as going to the Chiefs, how much will they use him? How quickly will they actually plug him in there and try to target him and make him a difference maker? Or will they just make him run around real fast and stretch things out for other people? Not sure, but I'm taking a swing any chance I get. Yeah, I mean, at 111, I'm I'm down with, with taking a shot on Hardman. It's For me, it comes down to, like, I, I, I get the... I'm fine with you saying, hey, my rationale is just Andy Reid in the second round and uh, you know on the Chiefs and there's we don't really know what's going to go on and there's a lot up in the air I'm fine with that but I think it needs to be around this area and not not super high because I question that the player is a little questionable to me like I don't I don't believe in this guy too too much I think he has been playing the position long only only two or three years so I'll give him that yeah he came into um, he was a quarterback in high school right and, for four years and then came in as a cornerback played cornerback for the first year at Georgia and then they switched him over to slot receiver which he immediately started getting play yeah I don't think he's a bad player I, he's just obviously not to rekill in my opinion there's only one to rekill like I mean to be a four two eight guy is really special um and just the the toughness and tenacity and burst and all these other things that Tyreek Hill shows me I don't necessarily see that from Hardman I see a fast player I see a fast player that needs to be developed and it might be a little bit before he's ready to go and be a fully developed player uh to reach his max potential so that's why I want to keep him down a little lower than than going up high because I don't see it as like oh well you need a player there is definitely a high ceiling there I just don't think he's ready to be plugged in and be the guy of a of a of somebody who's up at the top there who 
A, Tyreek Hill could be back by the time this guy's developed right. and, and ready to go, and they could have two or three other guys in front of him at that point. Like I, I just I, I don't necessarily believe in the player. I like the situation, and I and I like the where he got drafted. I like all those things, so I'm okay with taking a flyer with him here. I'm just I want to keep him down in the like I want Paris Hilton to be or Paris uh, Campbell <laughs> to be off the board, Paris Hilton. and Debo Samuel to be off the board. Uh, before well, before I take my shots before at. Jay Wayne gets going, I, like you, I mean, yeah, four two eight is special, but a man, man's four three three. So you're talking about five hundredths of a second. That's a lot. It's a lot when it, when you're that fast, though. That's not that like, much. It four, a four four five there's not, sounds so much faster than four five zero. There's a lot of four three guys out there. There aren't too many four two guys out there. Yeah, four three three is not too too shabby. No, I'm not saying that it's shabby at all. That's the reason why they Second got the fastest wide receiver in this class. He's really fast. I'm just Tyree Kill is special. Third. Third? Andy Isabella, four three one. Paris Kim Campbell, four three one. Isabella had four three one. Isabella's fast. I don't think he officially ran at the combine, did he? Who? I think it's uh Isabella. It might have been a pro day time. I don't yeah. know if that was an official I see either uh, way. I see looking on DLF rookie ADP, which ADP is out the window, but because Miko Hardman's down at 16 for uh, this, it's an average. Okay. So that's what A stands for average draft position. Miko Hardman in some drafts in 80 and in, in, in this, this weekend where I was in, you know, saw seven rookie drafts go off myself. I took him one five, saw another person take him at one five and then, so I got him at 112, saw him go at 2-2 in a league where I didn't have yeah. a pick, and I spent every, I tried everything I could do to get back in there. I don't yeah. know, uh, 2-2, that might, be, that might be a stretch. I don't know if I saw him past 112. In the, uh, in, we, we do a, a UDPL draft with the Dynasty Nerds and uh, Matt Kelly and, DL, and uh, DHH and the Dynasty Trade Calculator and uh, the Dynasty Trade Addicts and... Um, multiple other people 12 main league super flex and we were doing everything we could it's it's a super flex draft so we were, we were around two four we were trying to trade back in and either get hardman or butler yeah we're trying to pull and, off of and trade, i tried to, i was picks. trying to get, trying both to get both of them and the the guy who eventually uh rotobon uh roto librarian i think is his twitter handle um we were trying to get we were trying to get both Hardman and Butler, so I don't mind trying to pick those guys up. I ended up we ended up trading for Butler, but he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't come off a of Hardman. Uh, we were trying to trade for his pick, and we couldn't work something out. And then he took him, and I continued to try to get him, and right, I, I right. beat him to death with next year's seconds and moving back to my pick, and then an extra third. And he Good eventually was done. like, "This is a good deal. I just want to hang on." Which yeah. you know, eventually we got something done for Butler, but more than a ticket to the show. Some people do, some people don't, and I do. I, again, like I'm, I'm down with getting a ticket to the show. It just has to be down here in the right spot for me. I'm not gonna. Uh, I like Paris and Debo and the and the tight ends and uh, and DK and all those guys. Before I want to roll the dice on this guy. Yeah, I, I would for sure agree with that. With with taking those three guys over this him and then AJ Brown, you know, is still on the board. And if it wasn't for the situation, I probably would hands down take AJ Brown ahead yeah. of them. Uh, but I, I, I can understand here if you want to take Miko, uh, nickname, by the way, grandma and mom gave him that. It's actually Carrie is his first name. So I guess I understand why he goes by Miko. Uh, <laughs> Carrie, not, not to be confused with, uh, <laughs> uh, that one really tickles you, huh? Yeah. I gotta get it, it in. Gotta loves get it, it in. Loves it. Um, speaking of, of, of Harry, this guy's, uh. All right, that's one of the knocks is the drop rate. It's 128th. The hands are a little suspect. Seven drops on 93 targets. Um, just wanted to get that in right there. But, I mean, I've just defended Hakeem Butler, who has a worse drop rate than this guy. <laughs> uh, so don't take don't put too much stock in well, that. Well, if you didn't tell us about his drops, it would not go along with the last seven receivers we talked about. Right. right. So at first I wanted to be like, ah, who's McCole Hardman? Hardman, this, like – no one knows anything about him, and then and then it's even more frustrating when you try and go find out things about him because there's only like three games you can watch. Uh, ultimately, this dude just didn't have very much production. I mean, DJ, DK Metcalf had more catches in his career than this guy, so that's really saying something. Uh, he, but he just started playing wide receiver, which is right. pretty crazy to think about that he just started playing wide receiver. And this problem is not. Uh 
the problem of production is not uh, uncommon to a, in a Georgia kind of system where they have a lot of good players. Right. Um, along with multiple other systems where they have a lot of really good players. And every once in a while, you get the guy who comes in there who's the Julio at Alabama or uh, who's the Jerry Judy or, you know, they got a whole bunch of good guys over there right now. But so do, you know, so does out, so does uh, Georgia every year. They got right. a bunch of good receivers. So Riley Ridley doesn't necessarily have the production. I will say when I was and watching Hardman, Riley Ridley keeps popping up. And I'm like, damn, that good, that guy can run some routes. And yeah. a ton of backs that can get the ball right. over on both, and over right. again. On Georgia and Bama and, yeah. you know, other teams too, but I'm just. And good enough teams where they're playing ahead for most of their games and there's no reason to pass for yeah. the most part. Like those types of things need to play in the people's process and thought process, but they normally don't. They right. just want to, hey, they oh. just, well, when Julio was there, he was, yeah, of course. So, I mean, it's Julio. It's freaking like Julio. It's, yeah. Like, come on. So, this guy is pretty much probably the rawest wide receiver of all of these guys. Uh, one plus is that the metrics community doesn't like him, so I, I kind of like that. <laughs> um, but it's because he, he had a bad college dominator, and he doesn't even have a breakout age. So, so does he not have a birth certificate? Or? No. <laughs> In order to have a breakout age, you have to have accumulated 20% or more of your team's receiving yards in a season. And then whatever age you were when that happened determines your breakout age. Oh, well, there's age. no way he could be good then. Right. Because you're just wrong. No chance. Right. <laughs> Terrible pick, no. Uh, but what I mean, but what you can see from him in the games that you that you are allowed to see and watch, you know, he he has a really good vertical push. He's obviously really fast. There's twitchiness to his movements. You know, he's got he's got that time remapping ability where he can, for a split second, just slow everything down and sort of lull you to sleep at the top of his break. Jay Wayne just hit you with a video editing yep. drop. Yep, oh. I, I used it to describe D.D. Westbrook last year, um, but I mean. It just helps to the the subtlety of his change of direction. It's really hard to keep up with him, which he doesn't really run great routes because he's just not really a refined wide receiver, but his movements are to the point where he could develop into something right. good, I think. Yeah. Um, he just doesn't have which the is, experience. Which was leading me to say that it might be a minute before you right. actually get Which is like everybody wants to want. slot him into Tyree Kill, but I think it's going to take him a minute to learn, which... Andy Reid, if you if you keep up on Roto World, they're already talking about how they try to teach him some routes, and he was t terrible off the rip, but then he started getting it. But it's like he trial by fire, baby, right? But he he doesn't know these routes, and like he it's 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 impressive what he did at Georgia to come from playing cornerback to which he didn't want to play cornerback. He was kind of bummed about it. His dad made him stay. He wanted to transfer out of Ohio State, but his dad was like, nah, um, out of Georgia, right? Sorry, Paris Campbell on the brain. Um, but I mean, he's got a good family life. His parents, you know, drive him pretty hard and they put a good, they put an emphasis on grades. He was an honor student, uh, in, in high school, graduated with honors. Um, so I can see how he's, he's adjusting and acclimating faster than you would normally think. Um, but he's just back to Tyree kill. Like there, there wasn't too many contested catch opportunities that you get to see. I think I counted like four. He didn't come up with any of them. Mm -hmm. Like he just. He's not going up and winning in the air, or not necessarily in the air, but like deep in the end zone, he gets hands on his on the ball, but it doesn't. He doesn't come up with it. Like Tyree Kill comes down with pretty much all of those balls. Doesn't and, matter if he's about to land on his head, he's catching it. Right, and so he's. And just, it took Tyree Kill a minute to to come into. I mean, but that's kind of what he did off the rip. Was just I'm just catch I'm balls just saying, like even as how spectacular it took him a minute to really develop into the Tyree, dude. Tyree Kill didn't have a breakout age. I uh, just thought that was a. But anyway, there. but I mean, I I just don't know that you're going to see this return on your investment as fast as people are expecting it. And I think by the time I mean, you already alluded to it, Tyreek Hill could be back by the time this guy figures it out. And then, I mean, it's good for Maybe. the Chiefs offense, but I just don't know that it's going to be ridiculous ROI for your fantasy draft. But I'm still fine with taking this cut. I do like him more after looking more into him than I did just off the rip. Uh but I'm 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 down here at 111. I don't th I can't put him up above any of those other guys. Well, let me not, let me just say I'm not going. I can't knock him for not being Tyreek Hill right this second. And that's fine. Like Nobody's you said, Casey, he's playing over there with Georgia with Bradley Ridley and other players that aren't getting targeted often because that's not their system. Versus a all Paris, those, all the guys he was playing with just got drafted. Godwin versus a Paris Hilton Rid who's who, Paris Hilton. <laughs> You got you did it to me. Per, versus you know a uh, Paris Campbell who's playing in a wide open system over there with who's getting a hundred and something targets in Ohio State doing work with him, but he's being knocked for not being able to run anything but a, a drag. You know, so like 
yeah, he goes to play with Luck, and he's an explosive guy, 4-3 guy that takes it to the house every time he touches it. Pre- previous running back, Beast. All right, now he plays with Luck, and he's up here because he has this production, but he has these targets to go along with it. And Hardman, a recent position change, an honors graduate in high school, quarterback, four-year starter, goes to play with Patrick Mahomes. And right, like, that's why he's getting drafted here. Exactly. That's why I'm getting that's why he's getting drafted for right here with me and higher with me. Like that's so if, if, if he, but here's if he the didn't thing. go to the Chiefs, he would wouldn't be anywhere if, near where he's getting drafted. If right he now. if once it when somebody hits, it doesn't matter where you got him in your rookie draft. You no. wish you'd have drafted him earlier. And so I'm not gonna be sitting around being like, Man, I should have taken Hardman when I had a chance. Anytime I get a chance, I'll be happy to jump on Hardman. And if it works out, great. And if it doesn't Half these guys aren't going to work out anyway. So I'm all right taking a huge swing on Hardman. That's how I want to play my rookie draft. So I'm I'm all in on Hardman. Yeah, I can't say I'm all in. Yeah, I, I, I understand it. I'm fine on this back half. I'm, I'm taking all those other players above him. And, and I, I think he's going to do probably more for the team than he will for your fantasy team because he is a good punt. He's a good punt and kick returner. Uh, he averaged 9.4, 8.4 yards after catch. Um, compared to Paris, who had 9.4, which you don't see a ton after the catch on film, but it's there because the numbers are there, but you just, there's only three games you can watch. So I, you do see him tri- get tripped up from behind, and, and it doesn't look like he's as filthy as like Tyree Kill is after the catch either. Yeah, that so, was one of my – like he just – he doesn't seem like he's – He's very tough with the ball in his hands. Like there's a lot of like just hand swipes that are bringing this guy down, whereas that's, with Tyree Kill, that ain't happening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just right here for me. I can't be all in. And no, no, I'm 100%. Six, but you get you get to this point in the draft, I'm all in. But, big, you know, I'm, I'm not upset with you if you want to go a little higher, but I, I, I can't personally do it just on the fact of, you know, Andy Reid and being in this office. At some point, it's got to come down to the player for me. And for the player for me, it's not I – don't, I want the other guys above him, not just system fit. Like, right now I'm in the spot where – it could come down to a system fit and I'm ready to go and take a guy who uh, the, a player that I'm that I like less than some of these other guys, but he's in a really good situation. Sure. Well, like I said last week, there's once you get past supposedly the big four, you it's where where's your flavor, mm-hmm. you know? And again, I said it last week. You know, I mean, Jay I, Wayne just took Hakeem Butler, so I mean, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, how you feeling? Who yeah. you want? Who you want on your team? Yeah. Because it's only time will tell which order these should have guys should have gone out anyway. Hakeem's no. good is so good. Hakeem's good is really good, and so I I don't I I'm not upset with you if you take any of these guys that we've talked about in the last four or five picks. You can jumble them all up. Who who do you want? Who do you feel good about on your team? And then sometimes you do play all right. Well, like I said with the Fant pick, like I feel like in a tight end premium league, Fant was on the board. That team needed a little bit of everything. It didn't really matter. And you take a fan, and A, he could break out year one because of the situation and what he can do, and B, you got the asset moving forward. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we got one more pick to go to. Let's uh, finish this first round out. With the 12th and final pick of the first round in the FF Dynasty's 2019 rookie mock it up before you fuck it up draft. (laughs) Casey is on the clock. For team, the medium dipper. I added the extra R's. Still a pretty bad name. I'm sure there's probably some sort of relevancy to it. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. it might be an inside joke somewhere else. Um, but anyhow, this is the league champion. He's picking at uh, one twelve. One twelve. How's? I feel like my audio's down. Hang on a second. Am I like? You you're, guys talk. You're good to go. Yeah. See. How you feeling over there? Well, it just seems seemed like I was down in the ears a little. No. I got yep. you right here. The levels uh We still rolling? Uh, we are. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it moving. Good team. Obviously, uh I'm I'm going to pick Daryl Henderson here. He has Todd Gurley and that's a lot of my rationale here. I'll break down the team real quick. Patrick Mahomes is what crushed it. Really helped him get here. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Todd Gurley was was a pretty big factor. He got James Conner, probably not for as much as he should have paid for him. Zero dollars. At this point. Um, and he had Marlon Mack, which was in and out of his lineup, which was good. Um, and then he has Nuke and Juju, which are, you know, huge. 
can't do much better than that. Uh, no, not when you throw. You throw. He he didn't pa- have to pay much for Mahomes because he wasn't Mahomes yet, and he got Connor for free because he was still a backup when we ma- when this happened. It's a one QB league, so, so Mahomes is real cheap. Right. So you throw you throw Mahomes and Cheap-ish. Connor. There was still a little bit of buzz by some people who wanted him. Yeah, but, but you a know, couple, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't like he not like a regular starter right not like starter money so you throw nuke hopkins and juju and Gurley on top you throw you you have that fire going and you throw a decent a really good buy on his part with marlon mack and then i fought him for marlon mack for a, a while a dang crystal ball with patrick mahomes and just the lucky horseshoe on top with james connor with Le'Veon bell not playing and there you got a league champ on your hands yeah so uh bell was in the holdout because we did do this pretty late um so he might have paid a little bit more than normal for Con- for connor but he definitely didn't pay full price well bell was in his preseason holdout yeah. which would that's what he did the year before and he yeah. showed up and played but still has mike williams on the team and then he's got evan ingram down there which is you know a nice play i, I really like it for this season um but i i ended up taking todd Gurley or uh yeah todd Gurley. i ended Darryl up taking daryl henderson here I thought a lot about A.J. Brown. I did think about A.J. Brown when I was taking Paris Campbell. At the end of the day, with A.J. Brown, like you have to look at it as this is dynasty, man. Yeah. Like you, you can be upset about it. You're going to get a, end up getting a really good value on a on a big slot player here. Don't love him playing outside, so I'm a little confused on how he's going to fit in with what's going on in Tennessee for A.J. Brown. And Adam Humphreys. Uh, yeah, and then you got Adam Humphreys who's playing the slot. If he wasn't there, I'd be much more intrigued. Now, obviously, you drafted A.J. Browns, but you're paying Adam Humphreys like $10 million a right. year or something crazy. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know what the clause is. He could be cut after a year or whatever. But I don't love A.J. Brown outside. Now, they don't really have a tight end to speak of, so maybe A.J. Brown can uh, you know, kind of fill in a little bit of not, – not saying he's going to line up as a tight end, but could see kind of some of those – targetish areas that's i feel like that's kind of how aj brown plays really good player somebody's going to get a hell of a deal um and it's it's dynasty man you got to be patient and wait and you're going to get a hell of a player something will change either Mariota will be out of there or um well humphreys they they, they got they got to keep him this year and then next year it'd be seven and a half million dead cap if they cut him yeah and then there's a pot- potential out in 2021 but still five million dead well cap, they just so. picked him up yeah, they just are right. not talking about him leaving. They well, just I just him up. There, sometimes there's you know after a year you could cut a guy for cheap and yeah. maybe AJ you want AJ Brown a little bit more in that spot. I don't know exactly how the Titans are going to use it. It's an offense that's up in the air, but this is dynasty and you have to play for down the road here. And I think AJ Brown would be a good pick. That being said, this guy had Todd Gurley. I thought I thought uh, Henderson was the pick to go. You gotta you gotta uh, secure your asset here. Um, and though I don't think that Todd Gurley is going to be like. Uh, a huge issue moving forward. I think he'll be just fine. He's been a great playmaker. I think he scored something crazy like 40 touchdowns in the last two years. Like, just a good player for the team. He doesn't need a ton of volume to be a good fantasy player for your team. Um, and they obviously drafted Daryl Henderson and they brought back Malcolm Brown. So they obviously see some need to take a little bit of load off of Todd Gurley. I think Todd Gurley's going to have a really nice season this year. Just not going to see the crazy amount of volume. Again, I don't think he needs it to be a, a really high fantasy producer. He can score. He can catch it out of the backfield. He yeah. can break off long runs. Yeah. This is a spread out offense, which leads me to a Daryl Henderson being a nice fit. Great fit. This is what Daryl Henderson wants to do. This is where he right. came from. They had they had a how he kind of a system so much at Memphis. Right, these wide open lanes. They have a system where you they can spread it out, and there's playmakers everywhere. And McVeigh's a little bit more innovative than most people. I think there will be. You're going to see some Henderson week in week out. I think. I think he's I think, a pretty decent receiver. I think Brown is the girly backup if something happens to Gurley. Henderson's role could pretty much stay the same and slightly increase if something happened to Todd Gurley sure. is the way I see this panning out. Now, obviously, you just saw the blurb over the weekend of saying, well, we got the GM saying, well, this is a guy that we view as like an Alvin Kamara on our team. So everyone immediately already is. We I, we saw him go really high in a rookie draft, I think probably because of that article. Didn't even have Gurley. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think he'll have some standalone value. And I, I don't think... I never thought Daryl Henderson was going to be a guy that got took, taken and was going to be the go-to workhorse guy. I think this is a great role for him. Um, I again, completely agree with that. This is this is a guy who's electric in space. I don't think he's a great grinder between the tackles, but if you can get him out into open space, I think his best ability is choosing his angles and his lanes to use his top-end speed to his advantage and not allowing people to get angles on him. And I think that's what he did best at Memphis. I think that's what's going to be worked well for him. Um, 
in this Rams system. And, you know, I do think they do have a need of giving Gurley a little less on his plate this year. And H- Henderson's going to be part of the equation. I don't know how much you're going to want to be just starting Daryl Henderson, but well, there will be weeks where Henderson, I think, has a decent week. But again, I do think Malcolm Brown is still the direct actual running back backup to Todd Gurley, which is probably more or less why they secured him. They see Henderson as a playmaking piece for them. Well, you guys did Henderson early in your evaluations. He was one of the first shows you put out, so I was able to get that again. I had a baby this year, had less film watching in the last eight years, ten years for me, ever, really. And that was good for me to have that as my base for Henderson moving forward to hear y'all talk about Henderson so early in the process. And then I've been, been trying to play catch up ever since. And you can't look at Henderson and you can't look at stats for Henderson. You can't watch a game on Henderson or look at a highlight tape on Henderson without seeing explosiveness and what he can do with the ball in his hands. And when he goes to a place like the Rams, like you said, the fit, the, what he came from, what he was used to, it couldn't line up any better. And the fact that the Rams were like, we're going to take this guy in a third round. First of all, maybe a little bit of load reduction for Todd Gurley, but a nice piece of insurance, which was again, Malcolm Brown matching his tender offer too. You know, so I think that was a great play by the Rams, a great football pick by the Rams. And to me, if you were a Henderson guy to begin with, and you, initially you see him go behind Todd Gurley, you have to slap your forehead for sure for week one prowess. But if something were to happen to Gurley, I don't have a problem with you saying M- M- Malcolm Brown's number one in line for the totes because I think you're probably right, and he's still is still an electric offense. But then if Malcolm, then if Henderson's role would expand a little bit, slash could expand a little bit, slash well, I think just, it definitely would. We'll just, There's no reason we, to say no well, way. Well, it'll right, stay the same. Right. But. Exactly. It's not like well, it's not like hey, well now you know is Henderson got any better? It's just we don't have Gurley to lean on. So let's we got we're gonna. McVeigh it up. X's and O's going this way. Here comes Henderson going that way. And I, so I, th- it wouldn't hurt my feelings if you wanted to take Henderson a spot or three above this. If you're a diehard running back needy team, like we had a t- couple picks ago and two picks last pick when I need when I took Mikael Hardman, I needed Mikael Hardman to be in this first round mock it up, pocket it up for me personally. I wanted to say that that's my guy going in with Andy Reid yeah. and all that good stuff. But I, I got no problem. I can if see you a team wanna... like that maybe reaching for a Singletary, but it's a hard reach for me at that point. Yeah, and they're probably going to wait a year anyway. If you're if you're not going to have a running back two to plug in anyway i don't mind plugging in daryl henderson is if i don't have a, a two last year we had me, me and you had a team where we didn't have Le'Veon bell and we didn't have a running back two. we plugged in peyton barber sometimes we were screwed i would have loved to have daryl henderson on the rams for maybe his six to eight touches a game maybe more mm-hmm. and we'll see what happens and that's i don't mind if, i like this pick i like this pick where you're at but if you got girly this is a no-brainer and if you don't have girly it can still be a no-brainer yeah yeah definitely Definitely can't disagree with the pick for Gurley. And if you wanted to take him because you need a running back and there's no running backs, I mean, they took him in as the third overall running back in this draft. They took him three spots ahead of David Montgomery and four spots. And then Singletary went right off that after that. Yeah. So it was Josh Jacobs, well, got, Miles Sanders, and Daryl Henderson. I don't think they necessarily needed a David Montgomery. The the Henderson was a better fit for what they needed and, and are looking for moving Agreed. forward. Agreed. Yeah. That breakaway speed makes the defense have to be stressed about when, the, you know, when he's on the field. And if you when you put him on the field with Gurley, now you got to look over there. Just put you him on the field with some good space Brandon and let Cooks, him do what he Brandon does. Brandon Cook's going to beat you. Right. Cooper Cup is tough. If When he comes back, hopefully he comes back 100% from his knee. And then Bobby Woods is completely still underrated. And that offense is going to be tough. I don't know if he's underrated. He's properly rated right now for sure. Well, who? Robert Woods. Yeah. Well, well the man- cat's out of the bag. All, all of our offseason work last year of saying <laughs> get all the Bobby Woods you can, and the year before, yeah, the cat's I mean, right out of the bag. <laughs> we were telling you to pick up Bobby Woods when he had a, a 186 ADP, and yeah. we were like, maybe you should pick up Bobby Woods. We tried. We and tried. We told you, and there you go. Um, but now yeah. he's his fourth round pick. Uh, Henderson, I mean, although he, we just got him in the early six of a startup, Henderson, yeah. I don't know if I was best ball doesn't matter. Super sold on him, but I didn't go back and listen to our breakdown. That was a long time ago. I think that the Super Bowl was going on when we broke down Daryl Henderson, and I was thinking maybe his his sick yards per carry eight point two was a little bit of a fugazi, and and he had five point six yards after contact. But I mean, going back and rewatching him, I think he is a little tougher than I gave him credit for. And he's thick up, and the ball security is good. And he had 63 catches over a three year career. You got to like that. And he's in a good offense. So 
there's question marks about Todd Gurley, and, and at the very least, you could sell him to the Todd Gurley owner, I think. So, uh, and, and maybe he has some standalone value. You can't disagree. So I think I think that'll wrap up today's show. Finished up this first round. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Really appreciate the listen. Be sure to rate and review the podcast or however you're listening. It'll yeah. Excellent day. If you're on iTunes, hit that little five stars for us. That'd be great. If you're on YouTube, definitely hit subscribe or like or comment in the section below. We try to hit you back with something. If we want to hear from you, whether it's positive or negative, whatever, just hit us up. Uh, find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty, uh, at Jay Wayne's World, at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co. Anything else? So head over to Patreon. We're about to go do another show uh, for your pleasure. Answer some questions off the community page. It's popping off. Everybody's got drafts going on. We're trying to help everybody with their picks. Talk and about a little FFPC rookie drafts over the weekend. And uh, we just started best ball startup. Might speak a little bit about that. So head on over there. Before we go, I'm glad that we got the time that we put in on A.J. Brown at 112. Because as say you're a dominant dynasty team and you're picking in the back half of your first round, a team a, you don't normally get a, a, a wide receiver a like as him. good as A.J. Brown right. in the back of the first round. But due to landing spot, you're going to get that value whether you're, you know, 2-1, two, 2-2, two, 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 whether you're a bad team and you're at the top and you yeah. can get A.J. Brown early. And, but, you know, so that, that's the other some, part of 212 is like if you earned it, 112, like, it's, 112, like that's it. That, A.J. Brown should be a good pick for you again. I know you you're wait. getting good exactly. value because you should already have a decent team. Yeah, exactly. And you can wait it out. And, and it if you're dynasty. a bad team and you got the one, two, but you got the two, two, maybe, you, you know, A.J. Brown might get to you again. Sure. Um, he's I've seen I've seen a lot of good teams in the FFPC this year. A lot of teams, the way the trades work in those leagues, usually the teams have nothing to do with how they finish. The drafts are all right. over the place. And I saw a lot of good teams with therefore normally good owners taking A.J. Brown at the end of the first round. And I was quite jealous of the picks because kind I kind of sucks right now, but it'll yeah. be, I think it'll pay out to be really good. Picks. Good player. I'm glad you got him in there, even though he wasn't. I wanted a to. Pick. Had yeah. to. I almost he did when it. I was going to Paris, but I was like, I'll squeeze him in at 112. He earned it. Yeah, I mean, AJ Brown's been in the conversation for me in all these picks in the second half yeah. of this first round. Just couldn't pull the trigger just quite yet, but he's coming up soon. Uh, we'll be getting to the rest of this mock it up before you know it. Uh, we'll be yeah. back next week with round, round two. two. Yeah, if AJ Brown would have went to the Patriots at the end of the first round, he'd be in that top four. Oh yeah, right. All right. Well, we'll but see you next time. But instead, it was yeah. actually uh, one last well played, one sir. Last plug. Well played. You're a smedrick. All you right. Are. Thanks for listening, smedrick. everybody. Till next time. You've been listening to the FF Dynasties, Married to the Game. <laughs>